Hey, welcome, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ronald and this is my software journal. And today we're gonna to be talking about why mechanical engineers are switching to software engineering. If you're new to my channel, I talk about coding, entrepreneurship, and my life in general as a software engineer. I also give tips and tricks on how to be a software engineer. If this is something you might be interested in, subscribe to the fam. Without further ado, let's get into it. I've been seeing a trend on my channel lately because somehow this video blew up. Also, a lot of questions have come my way and I just wanna address those top four questions that continue to come up. First on the list, do you need a CS degree in order to be a software engineer? The short answer to that is no. There's been a lot of discussions and opinions on this, but my standpoint comes from a lack of motivation for spending money on something that's pretty much readily available online for free. Yes, the internet is vast and it can be overwhelming at times, but literally everything is available to you at a click of a button or a link. Google and Stack Overflow are tools that software engineers from beginner level to well-seasoned software engineers use on a daily basis. So just know that fact alone. You don't have to know every single bit of everything. You just need to know how to search. However, the approach you choose at the very beginning is so vital and very important. You can go back and get your CS degree, but that's not an ideal situation I would choose personally, because if you really look at the job descriptions, yes, some of them say, hey, do you have a CS degree? Another one is, you know, have an engineering degree. And the last bit of one, do you have the relevant experiences? And the relevant experiences is the most important keyword that you need to know. You don't really need to have none of these degrees experience and that alone will pretty much propel you forward. Or you can go about doing a boot camp, which is an accelerated program that allows you to pretty much get your toes wet in coding. It's gonna teach you the very basic things that you need to know as far as developing software and pretty much put a lot of projects underneath your belt. But it also depends on what boot camp it is. It can be a very steep cost. You're not guaranteed to get a job right afterwards. So keep that in mind. Or the last option, you can go about paying virtually no money and be a self-taught developer. However, this step can be very demotivating and overwhelming if you don't have the proper guidance to pretty much lead you through the path of what you need to know as a developer. But it is very much doable. I am definitely a proven testament of the self-taught route. And just know that fact. The, the self-taught route was the route that I took personally. And mainly it's just because I was really passionate about it and I had the proper guidance and mentorship behind it. I do plan on doing a video in the future discussing this topic a bit further in detail. So subscribe to this channel so you can be updated when that video comes out. All right, the next question is, are there any certifications I need to receive before being a software engineer? And the short answer to that is no. Certifications, like degrees, really validate your knowledge on what you know about that particular topic. But alone doesn't really tell you if you can really do the job. What really validates you is actual implementation, execution, and experience. Software engineering encompasses technical and communication skills that you have to use on a daily basis. Just like in life, you have to find the balance between the two skill sets. Technical ability is great and all, but if you don't have the communication skills to see what the customer or the end user is coming from, then pretty much your delivery will fall short. Same with the communication skills. If you can gather the information and you can understand where the end user is coming from, but you fall short with executing that vision, then you might as well just be a business analyst. No shades to the business analysts out there. Peace, harmony, and buttermilk biscuits to my BEAs out there. The next question, what programming language should you learn? The answer really isn't straightforward. It all depends. It depends on whether you want to do front-end development. It depends on whether you want to do back-end development. Maybe managing and deploying code on servers and environments might be your cup of tea. So DevOps and infrastructure engineering might wet your whistle. Each one of these roles of software engineering have their own tools that they utilize. Front-end developers typically use HTML, CSS, JavaScript for world development. Back-end developers typically use Java, Golang, SQL, etc. in order to build APIs and data model the database. 
Go check out my video on the different types of software engineering where I discuss more in detail those different roles. At the end of the day, it all depends on what problem you're trying to solve. This will in turn nudge you in the path you want to ultimately take. Which leads me to my next question. How can you go about learning to code? I have five words for you, my friend out there on the internet. Just start and build projects. Your beginnings is really important where you end up. I don't want you to go into the tutorial purgatory because that lane is super slow and mundane. To me, personally, start with a problem you have. If you have a problem that needs solving, you have more purpose behind your efforts. Maybe it's a website you're trying to build and you want to share it with the world. Research on how you can build that website very simply. Next, research how you can host that website so everyone can gain access to it. The simple things in life make up the most beautiful and complex things later on down the road. Trust me when I say this, Google, Facebook, YouTube wasn't the most complicated things early on. But look at them now. Well, Facebook is still trash. Too many round edges. So start off simple and be specific on what you're trying to achieve. Also, check out my video on how to learn to code fast and effectively. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully it answers some of the top questions that you might be having if you're making that switch to mechanical to software engineering. If you like this content, give it a like. Comment below some questions that you might have regarding switching to mechanical to software engineering. I'll be sure to check those out and answer those questions. If not, I'll probably do a video in regards to it. Also, give it a subscribe if you want to stay updated on any videos that I have coming up. Until next time, peace. Mm -hmm.